to you from 2 Corinthians, the ninth chapter, in the 7th and 8th verse. You must each decide in your heart how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure, for God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need, then you'll always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. Good evening, my dear listening friends. Again, this is Evangelist Cecil Moe. And as you know, I'm a converted alcoholic, gave my heart to Christ over 55 years ago in a pastor's home in Seattle, Washington. One year ago, God called me to preach. Well, I've been trying my best to tell people, ah, this Christmas has been a good Christmas so far. I've had the chance to witness to so many people and share with them, and it does my heart good. Oh, friends, you cannot give God. Try it. You know, Laterno, Mr. Laterno, gave used to give 10% of his earnings to the Lord. Before he died, he was giving 90% of his earnings to the Lord. Well, listen, friends, I'll be with you for half an hour tonight. Won't you kick off your sippers? Sit back and relax. Pour your glass of iced tea or a cup of coffee. You could even have a peanut butter sandwich and nothing wrong with that. Let's see what the Lord has for us, okay? If you have your Bibles with you, turn with me to the book of James, and let's begin reading with the, in the second chapter, in the 14th verse. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith, but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Supposing a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food, if one of you say to him, Go, I wish... Uh, you well, keep warm, and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, and I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I'll show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by which what he did. <clears throat> and the scriptures was fulfilled <clears throat> that says Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by what he, he does and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction? As a body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. I have named this faith and works. <clears throat> There's a lot of scholars <laughs> who will tell you that they don't think the uh, the book of James should even be in the Bible. Well, I do. It's a tough one. You read that book and you pray about it and you find out where you stand. Well, <clears throat> some would uh, suppose that Paul and James were contradicting each other. Paul said, we are justified by faith alone. But it says in Romans 4, 4 and 5, Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. James tells, it, tells us that we are justified by a combination of faith and works. 
Now here it says in James 2.24, You see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Now listen. It is true that one is saved by faith. What did they tell the, when Paul and Silas were in prison and the earthquake came and the, all the doors shook off the prison and the guard was outside and he come running in fully expecting all of his people in prison to be gone. But they were singing and praising God. And the, the, uh, the uh, jailer fell on his knees and he said, Good sirs, what must I do to be saved? What did they say? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Now you say, well, did he get saved? He sure enough did. Well, how do I know? Well, remember, after they told the prison guard that they'd had, they saw he hadn't escaped, he said, brethren, would you go over to my home and would you talk to my family about the Lord? He cleaned up their wounds and he, they went over there. And that night, Paul and Silas preached unto that guard's family, Jesus, and many, many of them were saved. And actually, did you know what they did? At midnight, Paul and Silas was out there baptizing his family, the ones that accepted Jesus. Friends, this is a misnomer. A lot of people truly, honestly believe that baptism will get you into heaven. Friends, there's not enough water in the ocean or sea, or anything else to wipe away one of our sins. Only the precious blood of Jesus can wash away your sins. Oh, I tell you, friends, if you ever get touched by Jesus, you will never be the same. Oh, I used to say, my stars, Christians are a bunch of boring people. Oh, but I was wrong. Christians are the happiest people in all the world. It tells us in Romans 10, 9 and 10, and this is beautiful, <clears throat> that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now listen to this. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. You ask someone if they've been born again, and if they haven't, they can't say they have. Now, I know our president, he says he's a man of faith. He really is not a man of faith. He's a Muslim out and out through and through, and people don't even know that, or a few do. It tells us in Ephesians uh, 2 and 8, For by grace, that means unmerited love, are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is a gift of God. Now, see, God gives a gift, and by faith, we reach out and we take this free gift. Now, you can't work your way into heaven, be friend, because if you did, then Jesus Christ died in vain. No, and you can't buy your way in. Oh, I know a lot of rich people who think they can. I told you the story about the, over here in <clears throat> one of these states. This man was a big contractor, uh, worked for the state and built highways. And he went to the preacher and he said, I want to build you a church. Oh, my stars, it's the most beautiful church you ever laid your... Ah, it's beautiful. And then, before he passed away, he went to the preacher and he gave him $50,000 cash to be sure he got into heaven. And the man missed heaven because he was trusting money trusting good works instead of trusting Jesus. You know, the Bible speaks about a man by the name of Cornelius. Now, Cornelius was a religious man. He prayed always. He gave to the poor. Well, certainly this man doesn't have to be saved to get into heaven. Oh, yeah, he do. Yes, he does. Well, uh, he was praying one night, and the Lord laid on his heart to get a hold of a man called Peter. And Peter, in a vision, he was up there on the rooftop, and he saw things coming out of heaven. And the Lord said, kill and eat. And he said, no, I can't do this. It's unclean. The Lord said, what I make is not unclean. Well, anyway, so Peter and his boys went down to sea. 
uh, Cornelius, this man that gave to the poor, the man that prayed always, and he preached unto him Jesus. He led his entire family to Christ. Well, you see, <clears throat> here was a man that doing the best he could. Oh, I've heard this so many times. Well, I'm trying to do good. Well, that won't get you that. My, my dear, sweet little cousin used to tell me, Cecil, I'm not a bad person. I said, I didn't say you were, nor did the Bible say you were. It merely says that we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God, Romans 3, 23. That means you've sinned. That means Cecil sinned. Well, <clears throat> and then I went on to tell her that, uh, that the Lord said that we had to be born again. Well, she never, to this day, hasn't got that through in her head. And all my friends, if she dies in that condition, she'll never see Jesus. When one is saved, he receives a completely new nature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Well, you are a new person. He takes out that heart of stone, gives you a heart of flesh. Now, many, many years ago, remember when Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria? Well, the disciples were bamboozled. Why would Jesus want to go through Samaria? The Samaritans hated the Jews, but they did. They went down there. And when it got the well, Jesus was tired and he sat down. And the boys said, well, we're going to go in town and get some food. He said, okay. And here come this uh, Samaritan woman to uh, get some water. He said, ma'am, could you give me a drink of water? Well, to make a whole long story short, she said, what in the world would you be asking me, a Samaritan? You and I don't like each other. Jesus said, you know, if, this, if you knew the water I was talking about, you'd never thirst again. If you drink this water, you'll never thirst again. To make a long story short, he led that dear lady to the Lord, found out that she was an immoral woman <clears throat> had had five husbands, and the guy she was shacking up with was not even her husband. She went back into the city, and she said, Did you know I met the Messiah? I met a man that knew everything about me. And did you know they believed that immoral woman? And she brought that city back out there, and many, many, many were saved. It is not possible for one to be saved without some measure of evidence. This evidence is called works. Now, see, this lady, immoral she was, she went back to town. Now, she's showing good works. She's telling those other people that she's all the Jesus, and many were saved because of it. <clears throat> now, it says in Evasions 2.10, For we are his workmanship, created into Christ Jesus unto good works. Tells us in Titus 2.14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. Look at Zacchaeus, a little short tax collector. Well, he was short, so when he found out Jesus was coming to town, he jumped up on a limb of a sycamore tree. <clears throat> and Jesus looked up and he said, uh, Zacchaeus, Come, I'm coming to your house. Ooh, this man was hated by every Jew that ever lived. Why? Because he bamboozled him. He stole their money. And did you know how I know Zacchaeus got saved? Well, because he said, I'm going to give back the money that I stole from people. See, there are some good works. Faith without works is of no benefit. And I read in four, verse 14 and 16, what good is it, my brethren, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save him? Supposing a brother or sister <clears throat> is without clothes and daily food. <clears throat> if one of you say to him, Go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about his physical needs, what good is it? So, faith without works has no benefit. We have here an illustration. One may say he has faith, but the proof of it is seen in what he does. To say that you have it, and truly having it, 
are two different uh, things together. Now, the Bible said, faith without works is dead. Now, here we go. In the same, verse 17, in the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. He said, show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by what I do. You believe that there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe and shudder. Well, when a person is in the hospital and they put their instruments on him and check his vital signs, what are they doing? They're seeing that if this person is dead or alive. Now, James is checking the vital signs. If there are no works, the faith is a dead faith. Now, works then is proof. No works, no life. Even the devils believe he, but he has no spiritual works. Again, verse 18. But some will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith, not your deeds, and I'll show you my faith by what I do. Well, <clears throat> works then is proof. No works, no life. Here is a challenge to those who disagree with this message. Find just one out of the many who were saved in the Bible who did not bring forth some fruit. It may not be much fruit, but there are degrees of fruit. Let me read in John 15, 1 through 5. I am the true vine, and my father is a gardener. He cut off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit he prunes so that it will be more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word. I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can, bear, neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. If a man remain in me, and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Friends, I'm going to ask you. Have you ever tried to lead a soul to Christ in the flesh? Nothing will happen, trust me. Now, the Bible says <clears throat> there was much fruit. Much fruit. And I read in verse 2. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and fine clothes, and a poor man is shabby and clothes, and he also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing the fine clothes, say, here's a good seat for you. But say to the poor man, you stand there or sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated amongst yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Now, there's little fruit, and there's much fruit. And then there's more fruit. It may not be produced at the instant of being saved, now, look, at there was Nicodemus who bore fruit much later when he claimed Jesus' body. Well, two examples of this found in verse 21. It says here, where's 21? All right. Was not your ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete, but what he did. And the scriptures was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God, and it was described to him as righteous, and he was called God's friend. You see that a person is justified by what he does and not by faith alone. Well, it is true he was justified by faith, but, here's that but, that faith produces works. You'll not find a finer example of works in the Bible than that of Abraham. Now listen to what it says of Abraham, the harlot. She believed God and that moved her to action. Friends, listen, let me ask you. You say, well, Cecil, Dad, burn it. I don't know. I don't know. I try to have works. Listen, friend, if you go out to serve the Lord with a with a full heart, you will have works. Now, if you're out there trying to promote yourself, that's not good work. 
We try to promote Jesus. He's the only one that can save a, mo a soul from hell. You know, I've told you this so many times. People say to me, well, Cecil, I cannot love a God that would send a man to hell. Well, who can? God don't send you to hell. With your mouth, confession is made unto salvation. With your mouth. You tell people. You see, well, the Bible said in, uh, in uh, the Scripture where it says, this is written that you may know that you have passed from death unto life. Yet this is a no-so religion I preach. I don't preach this. I hope so. I plan on getting to heaven. It's real. Am I going to get to heaven because I'm a preacher? Shoot, no. I'm going to get to heaven because one day in a drunken condition, I fell upon my knees and cried out for God to be merciful to me, a sinner, invited me into my, into my heart. In that very moment, he took out the heart of stone and gave me a heart of flesh. And I went home and I begged my wife for forgiveness. And God gave me back my wife and my family. Now, that's what he did. I didn't do it. But see, God changes you when you let him. Let me ask you tonight. You say, Cecil, I, I'm really trying to be a good man. I, I'm not saying you're not. I'm not putting you down. But have you invited Christ into your heart? Have you told him that you were sorry for your sins? If you have not, you're lost. You certainly are. Now, here's a prayer. If you've got a tugging at your heart right now, the Holy Spirit is drawn you like a magnet. And here's what you need to do. You need to ask him and pray this wonderful, powerful prayer we call the sinner's prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, in the precious, precious name of Jesus, I confess that I'm a sinner. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my mis life that's been so misled and wasted. And right now, Lord, I'm opening my heart and receiving you as my personal Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer, I want you to get on the phone and call 303-471-8534. I'll not use your name on the air. I'll not embarrass you. I'll not sit down and write and ask you for money. I'm only, I don't care where you go to church. I'm only concerned where you spend eternity. Please give me a call if I can help you. 303 471 85 Three, four. I'm waiting for your call.
Well, friends, for the past half hour, your host has been Evangelist Cecil Moe. Thank you so much for listening. Really pray for us this couple of weeks. We've got about five different services in the prison this couple of weeks. Pray for our health and pray that God will just continue to give us a holy boldness to witness for people. I go to a grocery store and I start checking out and I say, Did you know what? God loves you. Yeah, I tell you, you'd be surprised the looks you get. But I just can't help it. God does love you. And he wants to take you to heaven. But if you're a Christian, you need to get busy for the Lord. You're going to have to stand before God just like I am to give an account for what we've did with our lives. Where's those sheaves, he said, is to bring them in. Well, until this time next Sunday night, I want you to be good to your neighbors. Stay sweet. Keep looking up for this wonderful, wonderful Jesus is coming soon. Good night and may God bless you real, real good.